While burning sage dispels negative energy, it's taught that burning dried sweetgrass draws in positive energy. There's a saying about sweetgrass, may you smell as sweet to spirit as sweetgrass smells to you. Unlike sage, it will be harder to find and harvest in the wild, so you're most likely going to need to buy it. It's a wetland plant found in moist meadows along river banks and near the ocean. And it grows like any grass, and in fact, grows with other grasses. It's said you should pick it early in the morning when the light allows you to see the difference between it and other grasses. It's sometimes braided while still on the ground, then allowed to dry. I've found it dries very quickly, so I think that's why it's braided while still on the ground. Then it's cut from the ground and dried. And it's also used for weaving beautiful baskets. I know of two Native American sourced stores that sell sweetgrass braids, and, and again, I recommend buying from a Native American source because you know it will have been respectfully harvested. I'm not saying those are the only Native American sources. They're just two that I know of and buy from. You may be able to grow it by Googling sources of sweetgrass plants. I grow sweetgrass here in New Mexico, but my braids are very small and it takes a lot of water. Only get as much sweetgrass as you, you will use within a year. Don't hoard it. That's a teaching about only taking what we need from the earth and no more. Sweetgrass calls in positive energy, so think positive thoughts while you burn it. While you may never have the opportunity to braid sweetgrass yourself, I'd like to pass on the lovely teaching of how it is braided by some tribes. Start with 21 strands, broken up into groups of seven, and start braiding. The first seven represent the generations who came before us, our ancestors. The next seven are for the sacred teachings of love, respect, honesty, courage, wisdom, truth, and humility. The last seven strands are for the generations coming after us, children, grandchildren, and those not yet born. The fact that this is how some tribes braid sweetgrass teaches us that all of life is interconnected. One strand of sweetgrass can easily be broken, but 21 strands together cannot. So a braid of sweetgrass teaches us about strength of family and community. Sweetgrass is the hair of our mother, the earth. Each strand alone is not as strong as when braided together. All life is sacred. Enjoy life. That was a statement by Robin Wall Kimmerer, who wrote a beautiful book called Braiding Sweetgrass. Sweetgrass is often used for purification after sage. In a large gathering where it's impractical to send burning sweetgrass around because it won't burn for very long, just send the braid around and have people brush it over their bodies. It just does not burn as readily as sage, so you'll have to work to keep it going. I place it on charcoal. After you sage someone or something which releases negative energy, you can smudge them with sweet grass to call in the positive energies. As I said before, don't burn sage and sweet grass simultaneously or you'll be putting out mixed messages. There are people who will sell smudge ticks with both sage and sweet grass intertwined together, but I was taught to keep them separate, separate so I'm passing that on to you. So along with tobacco, sage, and cedar, sweet grass is one of Mother Earth's great gifts. In some native languages, the term for plants translates to those who take care of us. And from what we've learned so far about tobacco, sage, cedar, and sweetgrass, they do indeed take care of us. To be able to work with these plants to help one another is a great honor, so I encourage you to use them well.